another week. Um, differences, there's no game this weekend, but uh, with our bye week and, and uh, you know after 10, 10 weeks in a row of playing football and prepping, uh, it's good good uh, to have a break coming up this weekend. But also uh, allowing our guys to you know to um, heal up. I mean we we we've had a, a number of injuries, but allowing the players to to get to close to 100 percent will be key for us before we finish this. Uh, our home schedule by playing Utah Tech and uh, and having it be our senior senior game. You know we want to. I've mentioned this before. We want to win and uh, send them out the right way. And so a lot a lot to to play for uh, this next game. Um, but also need to make some improvement. Uh, keep working on fundamentals. Keep working on on uh, our scheme and keep keep uh, teaching teaching our guys technique. So that's going to be the focus. Is finding ways to get better during the bye week as well as getting healthy and then giving them a little bit of time uh, off. But uh, the goal is to get better. And so that's regardless of the outcome of the game, our, our, our job is to uh, keep progressing and uh, keep getting better as a team and keep growing closer together. Um, it's easier to do that when, when you can confirm it with wins. But uh, I'm really proud of the guys throughout the whole entire 10 weeks uh, playing hard, sticking together, and loving each other, and and keep uh, keep that progress going. So, uh, obviously, we wish the record was different, but uh, we're looking forward to extending the season and and getting this win. So, you know, early early start on Utah Tech and getting ready for that game to be bowl eligible uh, next week. So, that's the focus. Any questions you guys have? We'll take first question from Mitch Harper. Kalani, you, you mentioned uh, improving the health this week. Uh, just let's start there. Are, are any of the injuries to Kingsley, Chris Brooks, Wilgar, Tooley, or Mandel, are they season ending? Um, well, in, in regards of injuries, I think the, the season ending stuff, if they are definite season, season ending, we'll, we'll announce it. But um, you have to remember that we have a bye week coming up and then another, then another two games. And so the chance that they can make it to one of those, one of those, uh, games Utah Tech and Stanford, and then also an opportunity to make it to a bowl game. Um, there, there's a few that may not play in the next two, but will play in the bowl game. So it's not definitely season ending yet. Maybe uh, when we're getting some information, I'm trying to think of who I'm talking about. We'll, we'll be able to tell you more. But as of now, I think the, the ones we told you are the ones that are out there. Jared, go ahead. Kalani, I wanted to ask about conversations that you have um, with players. We're getting to the end of the season. You have a lot of players that are juniors but might be considering the possibility of going to the NFL or, or making um, or leaving the program for other reasons. Do those conversations start now? Have you been having them before? I was just kind of curious what that process is like. Yeah, uh, during this week, the, the, a lot of those conversations will be happening. And so I think – there's there's a, a good number of players that we have that are, are already have their degree in hand, and um, some of them will have another year of eligibility, and some of them want to go on to to you know the next level in the NFL possibly, and others are looking. For, I mean, others already have job offers and are uh, and and can move on from there. So it's just a matter of talking to the right people, and then and then you know allowing. NFL personnel to, to give their feedback to our guys, and, and then uh, they can make a, a decision on what they want to do. So, but I, I think more than anything, just communicating this week. It's hard to do when you're working through the season, but on this bye week, it's probably a good time to do it. And uh, we have a, a you know uh, 13 seniors that are, are going to be out of eligibility, but we have a good number of others that uh, could possibly go to the to the NFL draft, and could all, others that also have jobs that are already graduated. So. Uh, yeah, that, that's happening this week. Jay and then Jake. Hey, Kalani, could you lay out the kind of your schedule this week? Uh, is it the normal where you go? I think you usually go Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then take the weekend off. Or mm -hmm. just can you give us some specifics on what the plan is this week? Yeah, um, practice Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, lifting all the days, and then. Um, giving time off away from football on Thursday and Friday, even though we'll have the weight room available for our players. And uh, there's a lot of our guys that need to get caught up in, in academics, uh, especially right now, get, get caught up and, and get ready for finals and have their projects done. So um, 
trying to get all that stuff done. I think a good number of our players will stay in town and and take advantage of the extra lift time and then also be able to, you know, I think for us to get an early start on Utah Tech and and uh, keep focusing on the on the fundamentals of the game. I think there's always room to improve there. So that's going to go get at it and, and practice today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, and then uh, most of the guys will still be able to stay in town and lift and work out Thursday, Friday. Kalani, will you use any of that practice time this week in terms of like a developmental period with some of your younger guys? Yeah, the focus will be a lot on them. And, and now we're in the moment where um, the, the the players that are being redshirted could play. And so trying to get them caught up in, in everything, have a role, uh, whether it's it's uh, giving some, some, some of them a, a role in defensive depth and allowing them to compete for that, and then also getting them involved in special teams. So that's... That's going to be the primary focus in these three practices. Also, with the the guys that are traveling, the guys that are starting, giving them some. Um, there's some things to still improve on, so we want to make sure that we're, uh, you know, still working. You, you don't get things done by just resting. So uh, the rest will come later. We just just keep working. Mitch and then Jake. How much of the bye week, Kalani, is uh, focused on recruiting for you and the rest of the coaching staff? Yeah, I mean that's recruiting is a is an everyday thing. So um, you're always co- constantly working on on uh, developing and, and even recruiting your own players to, to giving them the right information. We talked about uh, giving the right information, make sure guys are, are know what's ahead of them, whether they decide to enter the draft now or, or later, and uh, so in terms of recruiting, you got to recruit your, your team first, and then you got to be able to work your numbers. We have a good number of players that are gray shirting that have returned from missions, and so um, yeah, we we have a good group that, that are coming in, but also want to make sure that we retain the best as well, and that we give them. I mean, some guys are are, are running on fumes, and this is kind of it for them. They know it, and and we want to make sure that uh, you know. Uh, let them know how much we value them, but also keep working towards the, the future as well. Just to follow up on that, uh, will that consist of, of a lot of travel for you, or will you primarily just be uh, still on campus and the rest of the staff travels? Yeah, well, with the rules uh, in terms of the, ga- the games to visit and people to see and evaluation times, uh, we, we, we've used quite a bit already. But um, in terms of travel, still up in the air. Kalani, uh, when it comes to this uh, time period, obviously you guys were sitting at four and five. You get to five and five. I know it's a bit of a hypothetical, but how different does it feel being at back at five hundred versus being potentially being four and six and having to win two final games to go to a bowl? Oh, I, I, I mean, I, I look at, I put more pressure on myself and on this team than anybody else. So we're, we're worried about going one and zero every week. That's that's the goal. So I'm, I'm trying to keep it simple, but. These guys know what, what's what's at stake, and so that this is a uh, it's good to get the win, and uh, but more than anything, I, I think we just keep working. That that's the that's that's a principle that that is eternal. Just keep working. Jared and then Jay. Kwani, uh, being the bye week, it is time to think about some big picture things, and I know that you know we talk about injuries and guys getting hurt. Some guys I know get to the point where they, they kind of have to hang it up, medically retire just because of, you know, they get so banged up and their bodies can't handle it anymore. I was wondering what that's like for you when you have those circumstances and have to have those conversations with, with some of those athletes that have put in so much. Well, I think just just communicating and talking to them and, and they know that we care about their, you know, their, their life, not just as a football player, but uh, their future. And so, um, it's giving them all the information that they can they can uh, see for themselves and feedback, and then um, you know us coming to an understanding. It's not us just demanding that they hang it up and retire. I think it's important that they they understand that we love them and that uh, you know the situation that they're in. There's there's options to look at, but there, there's I think it's it's important that they they feel a little bit of ownership in it as well. So I, I th- nothing wrong with talking about about things and, and options and. Uh, the circumstance, the situation. I think uh, young people nowadays, they really appreciate that. 
Kalani, speaking of two guys kind of like that, uh, Lopini Katoa and Joe Tukuoff, I wonder if you could just tell me what they've meant to the program, guys that have been in the program a long time and really contributed the, the other day to, to the win. Yeah, and, and you look at um, the situation that they were in last year, Jay, you know, they they were they were in a position where they, they could have easily, you know, just said, hey, we're done, moving on, um, and then... And, um, had to consider coming back and playing the, the last year of eligibility. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that we were able to spend some time with them and they were able to get all the, gather all the information and make a, a good decision on their side. And um, we're thankful that they were able to play for us. I, I just I love the leadership and, and um, you know, their opportunities to just buy in whenever they have a chance and, and to keep competing. I mean, with that, both those guys mean a lot to this program and, and they, they, they've been great leaders to us. but. Uh, all the all the things that they've done on the field, I know they get judged on that. But there's there's a little things off the field that they've done uh, to help our team and, and and to love our boys up, man. That's uh, they've been great examples on on the camaraderie and the brotherhood that these guys feel, the love that they feel for each other, and uh, really really thankful for for both Joe Tukuafu and Lopini Kato for what they do for this program. We'll take last question from Mitch Harper. Well, honey, I just wanted to ask you, I mean, you've always said that uh, you grew up a, a BYU fan, so I'm curious, uh, where where do you think that Puka Nakua catch against Boise stacks among the great catches in BYU history from your vantage point? Oh, man, I so I'm, I might be biased, but Puka's got so many catches that are unbelievable. The, the, the people ask me what, what what's different about him. He just practices really hard. And so he makes crazy catches all over the place. And, I mean, our, our, wide, our wide receivers do that quite often. So I, I don't – it doesn't surprise me the catches that he makes. But I think there's a, probably a bunch of catches that we have on film and practice that could outdo that one too. So – but, I mean, we have playmakers all over the place. i just just thankful that he got that toe in.